secrétaire générale adjointe des Nations Unies. Madame la secrétaire générale, vous avez la parole. Your Excellency Mohamed Bazoum, the President of Niger. Your Excellency the Deputy Chair of the African Union Commission. Your Excellency the Co-Chair of the Regional Forum of the SDGs, Madame Vaz. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, youth, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Let me begin by appreciating deeply the President, the Government, and the people of Niger for their warm welcome to me and to the UN delegations here in Niger, but also to the excellent facilities that have been put at our disposal. And at this juncture, I'd like to play special tribute and thank my sister, the Minister of Environment. I would also like to thank my colleagues in the UN ECA for putting together this event. It's an important event where we get to hear Africa's voice on the subject of development. We are meeting at a crucial moment for Africa and for all of us. Our world is experiencing a series of cascading crises that are undermining hard-fought development gains and threatening current and future generations alike. Africa is taking the impact full on with the socio-economic fallouts of COVID-19, the climate crisis, and the war in Ukraine, all of which Africa has least contributed to. We are meeting in the Sahel where the climate emergency is exacerbating a rising security threat, the spread of terrorism, and a catastrophic humanitarian situation. We are currently heading to 2.7 degrees of warming, which could translate into losses of close to 15% of the GDP in the Sahel region. And there is an unprecedented cost of living crisis that have pushed some 23 million people in Africa into extreme poverty in 2021. At the midpoint of the Sustainable Development Goals and Agenda 2063, we are far from where we need to be. But now is not the time to despair. On the contrary, now is the time for solidarity, for leadership, and for commitment to the actions that we need to take to implement the agenda. As the Secretary General of the United Nations said in Addis earlier this month, Africa is poised for progress and the 21st century is poised to be Africa's century. Your Excellency, Mr. President, thank you for bringing us together here in Niamey to face these challenges head on. Thank you for your leadership in the face of incredible complexities in our environment in which we must achieve so much with so little and urgently for our people and the environment that we live in. We are doing so with the common understanding that through Africa-led solutions born on African soil, we can change course and rise to the challenge of Agenda 2063 and the SDGs. Intra-Africa trade is rising in the region and the Continental Free Trade Agreement has the potential to lift 30 million people out of extreme poverty. Thanks all to the leadership in the African Union. African heads of state have also endorsed an action plan on sustainable industrialization and economic diversification. And so we must ensure that the emerging green and digital economies better serve Africa's people and the natural environment. And here, key to implementation will be the inclusion of our young population. Africa's energy transformation is at the heart of these efforts. The development of a sustainable value chain for electric vehicle batteries, minerals by the Economic Commission for Africa, and other development partners is a promising example. So too is the Congo Basin Carbon Credit Registry, which provides a platform to ensure high integrity carbon credit that are issued and strengthens African carbon markets. Meanwhile, the Great Green Wall that has been on the drawing board for many decades has the potential to deliver both climate resilience and sustainable livelihoods for vulnerable populations that they may have an alternative 
to the conflict in the Sahel. The proposed Great Green Wall, Blue Wall can secure similar benefits from effective management of the continent's marine and fresh water ecosystems. And this is important because as we have a conflict in the Sahel and in many other parts of Africa, so too do we see the rise of criminality in the Gulf of Guinea. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, when world leaders, including our 54 African leaders, gather at the SDG summit next September, it is solutions that, like these from a rising Africa that must be supported, that must be invested in. This summit is a moment when we come together to fight for the SDGs, but also to keep the promises that we made in 2015. It must deliver in three key areas. First, we must re-energize national SDG promise. It is clear that after seven years of implementation, we are not taking the bold decisions, making the needed investments to drive transformative progress. At the summit, world leaders must set out clear ambitions to reduce poverty and inequality by 2027 and 2030. And they must do this by making investments in Africa, investments in our economy, investments in our people, especially our women and our youth. They must convey a clear commitment to fully align national institutions and budgets with the framing of the Sustainable Development Goals. And they must put forward concrete plans to drive critical SDG transformations from energy to food systems, to digital technology, to social protection and education, and make real our commitment that we leave no one behind. Second, the summit must deliver on tangible progress in the area of SDG financing. The financing gap to achieve the Sustainable Development Goals and deliver climate resilience continues to widen. 43% of African nations are in or near debt distress, mostly driven by external factors that are beyond the control of those governments. This cannot be acceptable. The Secretary General has called on the G20 to unlock an SDG stimulus of at least $500 billion annually to developing countries, especially in Africa. On so many fronts, our world is on fire, and putting out that fire demands equality in our support, not hypocrisy and broken promises. More broadly, we also need systemic reforms to a global financial architecture that today is not fit for purpose, and that remains too short-term oriented, crisis-prone, and fundamentally skewed towards the interests of the rich. Through the SDG stimulus, coupled with initiatives like the Bridgetown Agenda, we will continue to call for such reforms. This includes ensuring that African countries can access debt relief, write-downs, and additional finance that they desperately need to recover and plan for an uncertain future. We need a breakthrough on access to finance for African countries so that they can scale up urgently required investments. Third, the summit must reinvigorate the concept of genuine partnerships. That means engaging with young people. It means engaging with civil society and the global public as co-creators of our efforts to transform the world by 2030. It means securing more ambitious and more credible SDG ambition from businesses, the private sector, while expanding engagement of local authorities, our traditional fathers and mothers, and investing in the science policy interface. And it means mobilizing global support behind those interventions that we know will drive maximum progress across the goals and country level. Mr. President, Excellencies, over the coming months, the UN system will work with governments and other partners to advance these areas towards your ambitions. These efforts will be grounded in the work that has been done by our resident coordinators, our country teams, and our regional capacities. The resident coordinators are supporting countries to develop and to move ahead on key transition pathways, policy transformations, partnerships, and coalition building, all to accelerate the momentum towards the 2030 agenda. 
It is important that we see the resident coordinators, not only as coordinators of the UN system in your countries, but as conveners of the partners that will accelerate the progress towards the SDGs. The UN's regional collaborative platform will also meet here this week to continue strengthening our support of countries across the region. And so, Mr. President, today you have with you all the resident coordinators of Africa meeting here in Niger, and I hope that the resident coordinator of Niger will set the ambition and the speed at which we need to reach the SDGs. You can count on our full support and collaboration. Finally, Excellencies, the 2030 Agenda and the 20, Agenda 2063, these represent our roadmaps to peace and to prosperity. And in 2023, as we decide whether or not we will travel that road, let us use this ninth Africa Forum on Sustainable Development as an opportunity to chart ambition. I look forward to these fruitful deliberations and, and the outcomes that are influenced by Africa's ambition that we can take to the series of meetings at the summit in New York and at the COP28 in the United Arab Emirates. I thank you. Bisalam. Thank you, His Excellencies. Merci, Madame la Secrétaire Générale Adjointe des Nations Unies.